five can is you. Thank you for sticking around and thanks for getting weird with us. I know my my I, I laughed so hard. What was that last week you said that? I'm huh, like, yeah. Thanks for getting. What'd you say? Let's get weird. Let the, is that what you sure that's what you said? I, 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 it doesn't matter. Weird remember. and overtime. Or that, it just worked for me. All right, so here we go. Last night, the New Orleans Hornets took on the the Battle of the Brothers, the Twin Towers, the separated by draft, not at birth. I mean, there's a, uh, you can say whatever you want about the Lopez Twins from Stanford. Robin and Brooke Lopez took got it on at the high. Mike. How did you feel about the Lopez Twins when they were coming out of college at Stanford? I think I believe they left after their sophomore seasons. Do you, do you remember when they came out? Honestly, man, no. Oh, wow, dude. You see, I, I kind of remember. I hate, 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 hate. I was just, Robin is the Hornet. Okay? Yeah. Robin Lopez wears these high white socks. Robin Lopez, we acquired from a trade with Phoenix last year. This is his first year as New Orleans Hornet. He's got, like, this curly, like, Jufro with... With like, and he wears these like schoolgirl white socks. Drives me crazy. But <laughs> I probably should have said Jufro or schoolgirl white socks. Anyway, the Lopez brothers got it all in together. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I, I, I need to stop. All right. So the Hornets fell in this one. They were down by they were down by as many I think 22 or 20, 23 points at one time. Mike. The Hornets, baby, clawed back as usual. They outscored the Brooklyn Nets 32 to 28 in the fourth quarter, but unfortunately, they lost this one 101 to 97. Well, well, here's the deal: you got Robin Lopez last night played played about 30 minutes, scored 14 points. You have Brooke Lopez, who really has emerged as an All Star in the NFL. Yeah, in the NFL. In the, God, come on, Lopez. <laughs> in the NBA. Well, here's the deal, Mike. Do you like Brooke Lopez? Do you think he's an All Star center? Yes. But why? Because he's one of the only guys in the NBA that likes to play big, especially in the East. Without a doubt, it's and ridiculous. he puts up numbers. I mean, he, last night he went, he went, he had twenty, he had, he went for twenty and seven, so he had twenty point seven rebounds. Then you throw in five assists, four blocks. That Brooklyn, stuff for support. But here's the number: your boy Darren Williams. Now that's a question: Darren Williams or Kyrie Irving? Give me Kyrie all day. Damian Lillard or Kyrie Irving? Kyrie Irving. You picked Lillard last time. When? Boom, last week. I knew I'd get you. You picked Lillard. You said, give me Damian Lillard. Kyrie Irving, you said he was an injury issue. Like, he was in. Like, that's exactly what you said. We can look at the video. I knew I'd catch you on that. You we will Damian look Lillard. at the video. I don't oh, remember oh, that. Oh, there's no doubt. You can go through five hours of video from last week. Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember Mike saying he'd rather Damian Lillard over Kyrie Irving, say, holla. Because that's what happened. But anyway, Darren Williams had 33 <laughs> points. You look at the Hornets. Anthony Davis. You see, Anthony Davis only played 21 minutes last night. He left the game with a shoulder injury. Uh, 21 minutes, 6 points. Not too bad for the rookie. Alfa Rucamino. Here's the guy that I'm just having a hard time understanding when he's going to find his niche on the basketball court. Played 29 minutes, 4 points. So, I mean, you you look at the Hornets. Grievous Vasquez was your leading scorer with 20 points and 7 assists. Obviously, I'd like to see Grievous with uh, you know, that ten, that nine, that nine to ten range to keep his average up. But I don't. Know, the Hornets just are aren't. They don't have the star scores like a Darren Williams. You know and what I mean? You can't have Eric Gordon going four or fifteen from the field. Exactly. E. G. Ten points, man. Ten points for two hundred sixty thousand dollars a game. Ten points. He got two hundred sixty grand for ten points last night. Think about that. And tonight he'll get two hundred sixty grand, and he probably won't play. Because it's a back-to-back game. After the game last night, the Hornets were wheels up to OKC. He is the most frustrating player I've ever experienced. You most frustrating. Most fr- frustrating. I mean, dude, grow up. Get off your little man complex. Well, here's the deal, Mike. They, it's not it's not so much his fault. Because the Hornets are the ones that signed him. They knew what they were getting in this guy. You agree with that? Or yeah, no? without a doubt. The Hornets knew what they were getting. They knew they were going to get a guy who had some ailing knees, who had knee issues, who had injury issues, who had toughness issues. And I think it's at the point, personally, where the Hornets are kind of keeping Eric Gordon out. I think there are times where he, the Hornets aren't pushing Eric Gordon to do anything he doesn't want to do. They're not pushing him at all. Now, why do you think, in my opinion, and just say my opinion's right, which it usually is, but... <laughs> Just, just spoken like a true narcissist. Just, just. 
what do you think? You think the Hornets are keeping EG out, and not not really pressing the pressing the envelope with him? Um, I mean, I could see that happening just because, as I just said, he's got a little man complex. He's got a fragile mind, apparently, and dude's a dude's a baby. Grow up, grow up. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the Hornets travel to Oklahoma City to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder Th- tonight. Tonight. I mean. Hopefully the, the Hornets can bounce back at the win in OKC, which will be tough on the best home crowds in the NBA. Mike, I know you brought it up. Let's talk about it. Listen to this score line. Oh, my God. Combined, first quarter, 49 points. Second quarter, I mean, this is it. the game got out of control. You got 55 points in the second between both teams, 65 points in the third between both teams, and then at the end you had 55 points between both teams. Then in overtime, listen to the drop-off. Overtime, you had 12 points, and then Miami came out on top. I didn't give you those two teams. We're talking about the Sacramento, the Sacramento Kings and the Miami Heat. Last night went into double overtime. The Miami Heat came out on top in this one, 141 to 129. Mike, that's a lot of points. Dude, LeBron and D-Wade. Combined. 79. 79. Oh, <laughs> let's just call it 80 points. They went for 80 points last night. And I'm about, to, two of them. I'm about to figure something out while, about LeBron real quick because he also tallied on 16 assists, okay? Dude, that so, is, that is the so let's just basketball. say none of those assists were three-pointers. Just at a minimum, points responsible for, you throw in 32 to that 40, guess what? You're getting 72 points responsible for if that's not even including 72 three-pointers. 72 points responsible out of LeBron James. And a lot of those might have gone to Dwayne Wade. So, I mean... Wayne Wade knocks in seven assists, dude. So, I mean, you look at these two guys. That's what I worry about, though. You look at Chris Bosh getting made all this money, had eight rebounds, 15 points. Obviously, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade are the two that make that big three. But Dwayne Wade, how much longer is he going to be able to keep this up? Because he's been in the league longer than LeBron. A lot longer. Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, Dwayne's he's got, up he's there. He's got a handful of years on him. So, you look at D. Wade, I mean, D. Wade's coming out of his prime. It's safe to say. The thing is, with D-Wade, he's 31. He's been in the league nine years. A long the, time. Almost a decade. The thing is, with D-Wade, he relied so heavily because he is a smaller guy. He relied heavily on his athletic ability, his ability to slam on guys. And athletically, I mean, he's still got it, obviously. But you can see there's a wear down Oh, there. well, it didn't eventually happen. I mean, a couple of years ago, you look at Kobe Bryant. He's been in the league, what, forever? How many, 17 seasons? Yeah. And he evolved his game. He had to. And Dwayne Wade's halfway to where Kobe is, but you just, I don't know. I think if you you had to pick between Kobe and Dwayne Wade after nine years, who you taking? Kobe was not really didn't have his drop-off. And I'm not saying Dwayne Wade's having a drop-off, but I'm saying he's going to be coming out of his prime relatively soon. So that's why I worry about LeBron and Dwayne Wade, because I think easily you give the next two championships to, yeah. to the Miami. Now, the thing As of now, you give you have to. Easily. And that's a difference I've always seen with LeBron, because he's constantly changing his game. You don't see him trying to bang as much as he did right. early in his right. career. He's a, really a passer. LeBron is a pass-first yeah. guy. If he does not have a straight drive through lane to the, to the hole, he's a pass-first guy. Granted, he's developed his shot a lot more in these last year, but... He's a pass first guy, and you can see that last night with 16 assists. Now, i got to ask you something. As far as a jump shot goes, do you think LeBron is one of the best shooters in the league? No. No? No. I don't I mean, he averages almost 28 points a game, which is ridiculous. With, I mean, you got to look at his field goal percentage, too. He's at almost 57%, which, I mean... Is seventh in the league. Which is lights out. I mean, he really... He's a stud. And a lot of that is from his jump shooting this year. He really has developed from the floor. Exactly. And I actually came across this article last night on ESPN, which gave me statistics about his jump shot. All right. On catch and shoot, catch ball, pop up, shot. All right. Yeah. LeBron, 45 of 92, which is 68.5%, which is among the league best. And you look at. A lot of his jump shot totals. Um, I mean, dude, across the board, it's there. And people seem to think LeBron is, you know, a post player who only gets his inside points. That's not the case anymore. He's not who he is when he was 
17 years old coming into the league. Yeah, no doubt. Stay tuned for the third quarter on overtime. We're going to talk some combine and later.